we learn along the way many confusing ideas about who we are, what we are capable of, how we should feel, how we should think, what we could emote and what not. And then on top of that, we also need to, uh, it seems like our role in life is to micromanage all of these experiences, thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences in order to feel stable, spiritual, correct, politically correct or whatever a fun person, whatever the title that you want to manage in your life is. And this is hard work because we are constantly looking internally and externally, but let's take a moment the internally, so to speak, and we try to make sense out of fleeting appearances, thoughts, emotions, sensations, what we call here points of view or data streams. Making sense of this ever-changing descriptions. Have you noticed, like even in the last two minutes, how many thoughts, emotions and sensations you had? Could you capture one and make sense out of it? And even if you made sense out of it, where, where is the insight now? Not really there, right? So that's what I learned and that's what I grew up doing. I thought, wow, I have lots of emotions here, that's lots of data streams and the, I felt like on a roller coaster ride. Sometimes there were insights, sometimes I could rely on what you can say my intuition, but what about all the 99% of the time that it didn't really work? I had to look honestly in the mirror and say, intuition and all the listening to my emotions, it's like trying to, to ride a very, very dangerous wave somewhere, uh, you know, catch a wave and like hope that somehow it will take us where we want to go. But usually we just tumble inside and we, c we don't really get where we want to get. So we, it's not reliable it's not reliable at all. And we are not talking here about an extreme where we don't have data streams, we don't have emotions, it's an empty void, look at my eyes, it's empty, kind of a scary state. <laughs> no, we are talking about full connection with life, full potency and power that is available to us through complete relaxation, through complete relaxation. Have you noticed when you analyze yourself, whether it's through the eyes of psychology or the glasses of spirituality or political science or whatever, um, have you noticed as long as you dig, there's more to be found? That's what I did. And I reached the age of 25 just before meeting the Balance View training and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I, I go to all these workshops, I read all these amazing books, I do all the work, you know, the effort to not effort, the effort like meditating really hard in order to relax, like, <laughs> you know, and all of these things. But still there's so many things, there's so many data streams and I feel unresolved in that. So I reached to a point where I was like, oh no, I don't want to continue, I don't want to age in this way. I don't want to age seeking for something and efforting to reach there constantly, hoping that someday I will reach to a moment of, ah -ha! you know, that was my description of, of, of the moment, you know, I need to reach this place, wow, and that will be so awesome, right? <laughs> it will be the best thing ever and light will pour from the sky and I'll know everything about everything and you know people will look at me and need to put sunglasses. Th that was my, <laughs> that was my, um, that was my moment of arrival and guess what I have arrived many times. I've arrived walking in the streets of Rishikesh next to the beautiful Ganga I've arrived and then or doing a meditation for long periods of times or going to sessions of healing or any other thing or in a moment of stillness in myself I've arrived yeah but then a moment after it was gone and I was so disappointed it felt like falling not from the stage but from a very high mountain and I started to blame myself. I said, okay, your ego is too big, your, your mind is too crazy, your, your karma is too dirty. Um, no, your pain body is way too big for this world, uh, your psychology, your past. And I continuously, or oh, your parents are not the right parents, your country, your accent, your this and that and so on. That's exhaustion. <laughs> That's the way to age very quickly and lose all of our potency, so I don't recommend that. But many of us doing that in the attempt to find happiness. 
you know, ideas like listening to our inner voice and everything. So let's, let's clarify this one. We have total clarity and stability at all times. It's a matter of, first of all, being introduced to the nature of our mind in a very direct way. Not a La La Land kind of fairy tale that no one really reaches there anywhere and any time, but something that is available to you right now and was always available and will always be available. This is the nature of our mind. When you stop thinking for a moment, what remains? Alertness, cognizance, the power to know, open intelligence, awareness. This is open intelligence, that's, that's our power. After a moment, data streams flow on by, like thoughts, emotions, sensations, and other experiences, and these are what we can see, that these are inseparable from open intelligence from this basic stable state that it's always on. We didn't need to effort in order to have it. It's what's looking through your eyes right now. You don't need to do anything for that. But to be introduced to it is a very crucial moment because then the seeking for it in a, some kind of a special state, some kind of a special set of data streams comes to a stop. And we can relax and rest and see that whether we are thinking loads or not thinking at all, open intelligence is equally present. And there we have the masterful choice to rely on short moments. This is the practice of, of balanced view. Short moments of open intelligence repeated many times until the instinctive recognition of open intelligence becomes continuous at all times. Not just with positive thoughts, not just when you don't have negative thoughts, not just in a party or after the party, always on. And you can recognize it right now with whatever is coming up for you. And see the beauty of it, the, s the act of self-love comes about in short moments many times. You allow the data stream, the current one, confusion or a beautiful insight that you want to keep and hold and you know, nail to the wall in your guest house. The moment self releases itself without anything needing to be done like a line drawn in space. All the stories of the past, you know, that we've been carrying with us in one short moment, they're gone. And it's not like we are denying again or neutralizing. We see that the choice to emphasize our data streams is a choice of being a victim. It's a choice of being a victim to our random thoughts, emotions, and sensations. And we've been all been trained so well in that. And not just that, we added the external training to affirm that we are victims of our data streams. Think of all the times you went to someone who told you, yeah, you flawed individual, that was the subtext. Only if you do X, Y, and Z, maybe you will reach to some better place that is for sure not now and for sure not with your set of emotions and sensations. I paid people to tell me that. I spend lots of time, lots of money, lots of energy to affirm and confirm my flawed identity. Does that make sense to anyone sitting here today? The freedom in immediacy of perception is undeniable. Recognize it now in your own experience, one short moment at a time. We don't need to do anything for that. Free and open like vast blue sky <coughs> with nothing in the way nothing in the way. Our stories, our emotions are inseparable. They're not enemies. They're not like um, anything that we need to do about them, but we can let them be as they are. And that's the full engagement in life, fully alive, rather than avoiding thoughts, emotions, and sensations. And that's the only way to really love ourselves and to really enjoy true love in every moment. I know we had Valentine's Day, we had a topic about that, you know, looking for love in all the wrong places and assuming that it's a certain set of emotions. And that's very confusing. And that's, you know, loving ourselves. You hear many times, oh, you need to accept yourself. What does that mean, actually? What does that mean? I never understood that. You need to love yourself. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> But what does it practically mean for someone simple like me? It means allowing the current data stream to be as it is and see that it poses no threat. So no effort is needed to read somewhere. There's no need to analyze ourselves until we are dead. That will not bring us life satisfaction and flourishing. 
everything we need to know comes from the vantage of open intelligence, the clear seeing, the knowing what to do and how to be and what to say that will actually be of benefit. Not just a random thought, that's what I feel now. <laughs> you know, in intimate relationships, you probably know that for those who enjoy this um, part of life, being in an intimate, re intimate relationship or with friends. I used to say everything that came up because I thought that that's true honesty and that's true connection. So whether you want to hear it or not, it's your problem, you're around me. So th that was my attitude. But from the vantage of open intelligence, it's like being on a mountaintop, totally relaxed and at ease and knowing exactly what will bring the greatest benefit of all, what will serve everyone rather than stirring the data streams in an endless pursuit to find some relief. You know, the momentary relief of complaining, of, of being high on something, these don't really provide us with the tools and the know-how how to live it in everyday life. So we are not talking about being high or being in a void or avoiding everyday life, but bringing the instinctive recognition of open intelligence to everyday life. From being stuck in a valley of description, some are good of course, I'm not taking an extreme here, some are really nice, but they are also gone as soon as we try to catch them, and some are negative that we really try to indulge, avoid or replace them with better ones, we are stuck. But going on the mountaintop of open intelligence in one short moment, we see everything totally clearly. We see that there's no struggle anywhere. That's amazing. I came to the Balance View training and specifically to the 12 Empowerments training with so many problems. That's the foundational life-changing training in Balance View. So many things that I wanted to change, like books, Wikipedias, <laughs> endless Wikipedias about me, my ego, my karma, my this, my that, everything that I accumulated, not just in this lifetime, in all lifetimes. So guess what? There was a lot of work and what I received in the 12 empowerments was the greatest simplicity, a tool that I can use and know-how of how I can use my mind in the most optimal way. Being a victim, option one, being empowered in every moment, option two. I like it like that, <laughs> option two I mean. The 12 empowerments also think through all of these belief systems and assumptions that we spoke about today, like what is true love, do I need to effort in order not to effort, the answer is no. Um, do I need to do so many practices that are involved and in, like breathing and jumping around and thinking about my data streams? Not at all, I mean if you enjoy it, great, be my guest, but you can also while doing all of these things bring the piercing clarity of open intelligence in short moments many times. That's a great relief. You know, for someone like me who constantly woke up with the sense of, oh, shit, <laughs> another day. Even if my circumstances were great, you know, beautiful wife, uh, beautiful cat, um, <laughs> some rupees in my wallet, and a co coconut water in the fridge, still this thought could come up. And I was like, oh, wow, what's, what's, wh why? And I started to scan myself Okay, t -t -t, the arrows of today, that's what you'll need to do. Let's breathe it away, meditate it away, think about it just a bit more. Maybe I'll reach to a conclusion, even though for 20 years there was no clear conclusion. conclusion. But let's try a bit harder. <laughs> and then suddenly being introduced to open intelligence and short moments and the 12 empowerments training, it was like the same thing came up, you know, all the circumstances are right, <laughs> the internal thoughts are wrong, and I could relax for the first time. It was like, bingo. That's what I was looking for. The immediate relaxation, not some kind of an end of an endless tunnel that maybe at the end I'll collapse and relax because I exhausted myself, but the effortless relaxation of each, and each moment. The freedom in immediacy of perception that is always on, never can be switched off. Nothing stand in its way, like nothing stand in the way of this space that we are sitting in. Nothing. Not your thoughts, not your emotions, not your physical body. Everything is pervaded by space. Everything is pervaded by pure open intelligence that is always knowing what will be of greatest benefit to all. You see, that's not a self-help project. The self-help projects lead nowhere. The self-help book leads you to think that you still need help even if you practice for one million years. Here you find your empowered nature from the very start. 
and that's what you can practice and gain confidence in with the tools and support of the Balanced View Training. That's what I found and that's what so many people around the world find. Empowerment, empowerment, empowerment and the end of seeking and victimhood. 